Disclaimer, the following video is for entertainment and informational purposes only. It is not intended to replace any type of formal twining used at your own whisk. All right, welcome back uh, newcomers and, uh, and long timers. Welcome back. Today we're talking about something, uh, a tree trick or a, a rigging trick for certain scenarios. You won't always uh, use this on a daily basis, uh, but <coughs> in all my years of watching YouTube, um, I've never, I don't think I've ever once seen somebody uh, talk about this rigging uh, trick, I guess we can call it, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, a cheat code, a hack. Um, I call it the poor man's speed line, but it's it's more of like a controlled speed line, so uh, we can call it the poor man's speed line just for, uh, for simplicity. Uh, even though... They kind of can utilize uh, a few pieces that are a bit pricey, but let's uh, let's go over. Uh, what do you think when you traditionally think of speed line, and you think of like something like something like this here, like a kit with slings. And you got your uh, you know, these go around the the branch, and they zip on down the rope, you know, to where it did your designated drop zone. Here, I hope you can see the. We'll zoom you up close in case uh, it's hard uh, with the the glare and such. It might be hard to see this whiteboard. All right, this is our scenario here with our tree our tree and uh, say this is even this is either an entire removal and we want to save some labor but we and we don't you got to mind you you don't own uh you don't own a speed line kit for this but you do have your basics a porter app at the bottom of the tree you have a rigging rope and you have some sort of block but we could also utilize if this was a you know natural cross you can utilize it too it's nice uh, when you can em employ the hardware for smoothness, but this is your traditional setting. Like this is a, you know, a p nice beefy piece of limb wood that we want that we're rigging down. This is the traditional sense. It's going to come down. Pretty much going to find its center of gravity. It's going to come down, uh, right directly below the rigging block. That's a block. Yeah, it's goofy. I don't know what kind of block that is, but so that's traditionally what would happen. What this is our scenario. I haven't decided whether or not we're just uh, doing some illegal pruning, you know, taking something way too big that shouldn't shouldn't be pruned off the tree. But Mrs. Harsilowitz wants her view to the lake. The lake's out here, so we got to kind of make her happy so she can at least still keep her tree. We could say that, or it's just this is just going to save as much work as we can because we have this gully. They drew a, like a steep kind of gully that nobody really wants to have to carry all the brush and materials out to over here where the chipper is. And then we have an F-150 park there for a little bit later. Everything's not, like nothing here is to scale or nothing, it's just, just to create the general scenario. So whatever, removal and we want to, uh, rather than traditionally rigging all of our material down and having to truck it up this gully, over here where we have the, the chipper and chip truck is the best we could do is get over here on this driveway. Let's just say it's a trail, wooded trail or driveway. And this is the best, so everything has to come up the steep gully. And then, uh, so uh, with a traditional speed line, sure, we could probably try to incorporate. That's why I got Mr. Uh, F-150 sitting over here. It's like, even if uh, there's no trees, generally, yes, yeah, so if we can find a tree or something to put our porty on, then yes, that's what we're gonna do. And, uh, and zip that stuff on over with the, uh, the speed line kit and the porty over here. But even uh, if you can get your truck somewhere, we've often, I've done this a lot of times where we, or even a trailer, you know, because trailer have lots of, trailers have lots of uh, ratchet, you know, load uh, tie down spots on them. You can even use uh, that to, to tie, um, to use even a figure eight if it's light duty stuff, or, but your porty, but your porty are on, are on a trailer hitch, you know, tie it to your pinnel. Put your porty on your pinnel of your truck, your bucket truck, whatever, somewhere or something. You know, you can. That's trucks make great mobile anchors for speed line scenarios. And so we get, we have our porty here on our on our uh, F-150. I'll draw this out and then I'll, we'll zoom in just in case you can't. I can't tell what you can or can't see as far as we're we're pretty close or as far as your view goes. I can't tell uh, exactly. Pick up, nigga. We gotta get this money. All right. Now. This isn't gonna do us much of, much of nothing. So we found a new a new place to put the porter wrap, but this doesn't help us. This bitch is still coming right down here into the weeds, you know. So here's where our trick comes into play. And this is all we're talking. So this is what we employ: our normal porter wrap, rigging rope of any diameter, you know, and of any uh, you know, strand, whatever. 
preferably, I mean, a lot of times both guys are going to be 9 16 and half inch uh, rope to start with anyways. Once you get onto trunk wood, yes, you're going probably going to be up and bigger. And at that point, this that's not what we're talking about anymore. This has nothing to do like with uh, negative rigging trunk wood. This is all for uh, pretty much moving material. All for uh, yeah, moving moving limb limb wood and uh, and brush and stuff. But anyways, we have our traditional, uh, just a regular old uh, nine sixteenths uh, old school prusik because I use I bought you know one of these because uh, specifically for uh, rigging purposes. Simply just need any type of uh, I and I um, I and I hitch and a carabiner. Technically, is the what makes it a poor man's setup. And then we get a little bit. A little bit pricier with uh you know the rock exotica but this is uh this is a great use for if you already have one of these and use these often for like mechanical advantage and light duty this and that some span rigging i love these for span rigging too i feel like that's what this guy right here the the rock exotica 2.6 she's a beefy beefy girl and can handle anything you can throw at her as far as half staying within half inch rope production uh or half inch rope uh specs you know since that's all this is technically rated for its half inch rope but anyways I've, I, I incorporate this this on a dead eye sling sling was all messed up daisy chain there i don't know why it was all goofed up but anyways dead eye sling so that way when i span rig this can roll up and down the rope and then right here i can tie this uh have my rigging rope tied off right here in front of me from climbing and then this is uh onto the rigging rope and then i tie this onto the piece onto the piece and then uh zip and away she goes you know anyways that guy that guy was pricey when i bought that years ago and i'm sure the price is now with this crazy world we're living in or i don't even know how much this stuff costs anymore half the time but uh anyways little baby little baby rock exotica makes this thing a lot a lot nicer and so we're gonna go to another like we're gonna make up a little tiny mini model uh, I think too just to showcase uh, the reason I, I felt it more valuable actually to talk about this on the whiteboard versus show uh, in the field uh, footage so we could kind of maybe cover um, a wider range of scenarios or uh, just sort of maybe do it a little more thoroughly than uh, just talking about one particular live action uh, scenario even though uh, we can do a follow-up when I, uh, I I did one a while back to where I was kicking myself for not uh, recording it even with the iPhone from the ground or something like that because uh, it's literally that's why I kind of drew the gully because it was very similar to this this scenario here but it was literally it was like the perfect example of, of how this system shines is it really did totally uh, uh, just take took a lot of the labor um, away from this job and uh, saved uh, time time to, to boot so we were uh, you know profits uh, benefited from this scenario so um, these we incorporate let's go back okay got our piece tied off that we're gonna cut climber bucket truck whatever we're gonna cut it's not even balanced either too so that sucker's gonna kick kick way out isn't it but uh that's okay we're, we're not worried this is just all about the trick here rock exotica pulley clips on to the uh, porty side of things. Uh, Prusik stays here. The fixed Prusik, or you could incorporate, uh, I would I would advise against it, but to make it an even more basic system, you could uh, do an Alpine butterfly. But I, de I definitely have never really had good luck uh, in rigging scenarios using Alpine but butterflies. They bind up way too hard. So I guess word of caution, but technically, if you didn't even have a, an a spare I and I hitch cord to, to to gamble throw away for rigging purposes, uh, then you could do that to get you by. But with just an Alpine and a carabiner, a steel a steel carabiner, hopefully, for, you know, preferably. But that's all this is. It's so simple. It's bare bones, you know. It's but it's like you take a. Uh, you take your your system makes it even smoother when you can have a block and another and a you know rock exotica rock exotica make it real smooth and anyway so this bitch is gonna roll now you can kind of see where we're getting at here and the uh, the prusik is adjustable and so we can kind of uh, that's that comes into play for certain scenarios because you could have this prusik down here and then the, the angle of the rope would be they would basically be joining you could have that closer but the heart uh, I guess the higher up 
you have your your adjustable prusik is kind of going to benefit you as far as how 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 much you want your uh, load to travel. So this is very similar to the scenario I was just describing uh, where we utilized this uh, in person um, not that long ago. Gully. This was actually uh, we had to ignore the tree because really it was a, a keeper tree. It was a big poplar tree, and then it was a dying, a smaller. Uh, dead dying eyesore of a poplar tree below it it was just a hair shorter so that's why it was this was golden I was able to go up set hardware on the keeper poplar tree and then uh, pretty much rig up like 95 percent of the removal tree all the way over to where we could grab it there and we just had to walk walk in and, and, and throw a couple of uh, pieces of the base wood you know on our shoulders and truck them out but basically got 90 percent of the tree rigged over by putting the porter wrap out here uh, on the pinnel hitch of our bucket truck we had i actually worked the tree too from the driveway so i had the bucket truck here was reaching out again kind of have to ignore the illustration because it wasn't quite like this but i'd set my rig and then we had uh jason i think was running the running the porter wraps porter wrap and basically yeah everything when you make the cut everything kind of it doesn't it's not going to perfectly because of rope sag rope stretch it's not going to perfectly you know you would probably have to have some really extreme uh you know you have to like a cmi rope jack or something really to 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 get that rope extremely tight to try to even come close to getting the load to ride all the way to the porter wrap but it's basically going to meet you more than halfway you know when you consider your your stretch and angles and stuff like that all but basically, that's going to take your material, you know, and get you damn, even if it's on the edge of your, the crest of your gully or something, right there where you can grab it on safe, nice, easy, flatter land versus having to cart everything up, you know, like the, like what this scenario here, it looks like it's offering us. So we're going to cut, and then the rope, the rope is t tight, mind you. We have to get it as tight as we can uh, before we make the cut. And then uh, we gives, he gives us the go-ahead, we make the cut, and it rigs, and it's... And it slides on over boom that's a controlled speed line but but, but your traditional um controlled speed line scenarios oftentimes incorporate still your traditional rope you know porter porter wrap up to the block to your piece and then you have like a separate rope as well incorporated that that acts as the speed line so it's kind of like uh and then you know you have to tie that that piece up to that separate rope so that way you can lower you can still have control and lower traditionally with this setup and then it, it's you got someone else with a rope anchored off somewhere your second rope and, it, and then this will glide down that rope and that's a controlled speed line but in this case we, I call it poor man's because it basically you know you basically turn one traditional rig system into uh, you know doing doing more than one thing at once and uh, and like I said play around with this uh, as as I think as I got lower where it really shines too with the adjustability as I got a little bit lower on that removal I was working down the the, the angles changed and uh, so if I had if I kept my prusik so when I kept my prusik kind of uh, close close to where my um, tying off onto the piece that, that kind of creates a bit of a, a large large belly going on when we had that whole tether close there and then so it really kind of doesn't like you make the cut and it doesn't really you know it doesn't quite make it as well as if we can arch uh, if we can crank this up and get it up high that's what I had to do there and then that does create kind of more of a a bit of a goofy spread here but like uh it kept uh we were able to get the rope a little tighter and it kind of kept that bitch uh riding riding a little bit better so you that's something you, you would you play around with as you need to you know i mean it's nice uh, just to keep this close uh close by to easy to work with but i had to kind of uh boom up and adjust that at one point uh to help to help uh land the piece out just a hair farther than what it normally would have you know kind of probably landed a little short so now that you got the gist of that in you know in a general scenario you know you can uh 
like I said, that's what makes this this system nice. Is it, like whenever you can get away with, uh, we always try to look for other trees and stuff like that around where that we can utilize to, to at least to cover. Like if we have just even like a shed, pretend there's no gully here, just a nice level yard, and then like whatever, there's like a a, a pool house or even a yeah swimming pool, just something. Uh, here's a little uh, a shed shed to avoid god that's not drawn to scale the limbs the limbs practically already on top of it isn't it we didn't think of that but anyways okay so it's a shorter shed but uh same thing you know if you just need it to you don't need your piece to you're not trying to land your piece way out to the front you know around the corner and out to the front yard into the to where the the chipper is you just want to especially if you're two men that's that's one one very good point about the system is uh two two guys you know uh, if you're a small crew you know it's going to be hard for the the ground guy to rig traditionally when this damn thing's going to like come onto the shed he's going to have to have, try to hold the hold his rope with one hand and sort of reach up and grab the stuff to help manipulate it out and over uh around obstacles so this way one man can become two with this system uh the man multiplier i don't know it's just like that way now this guy your your groundy out here he can uh, be running and uh then it, it, it zips it down out here away from the obstacle for you and he can go bingo bango and then when you pull up he pulls up on the rope as well the uh that forces the uh, pulley uh, if he leaves leaves the pulley on and the prusik alone and just unties it and then pulls the rope back up, it basically speed lines the uh, in reverse. The pulley uh, speed lines in reverse, but the pulley back to you, you know, to where you are in the tree for your, to make your next uh, rig. All right, we got this little uh, we got this random clothing rack. Uh, Mountain khakis, Jackson Hole, Wyoming is what it says. Anyways, see that. Got this random clothing rack that we're gonna utilize for our uh, our demonstration here. So I'm just gonna do a four coil uh, English prusik for uh, simplicity's sake. All right, got that on the, the rigging end. And the, the where's the like I said, that's on the end that you're gonna uh, detain our debris, our, our limbs to. And then we got our rock exotica goes on, or just the carabiner itself. If you don't have a rock exotica. That sucker's going on the running. The running end. See that there? Now my uh, my anchor, rather than just being down here at the bottom of the tree and riding straight, now I'm going to go, you know, I'm off to the side. I'm anchored to a pickup truck or whatever. I don't really have enough weight nor height to accurately... Uh, to really accurately demonstrate that's why we'll have to get uh we're, we're gonna have to follow this up here in the near future where we actually uh let's get us a hands-on uh in the field example but this is just to wet your whistle and get you going on the idea because uh this right now I, can't, I don't really have enough weight for it to even ride down the rope so i just basically have to manually you know manually do it as far as my anchor goes and i manually pull it out and it's gonna ride you know out away from our typical uh, what typically would have happened there but that's basically the gist of uh, the gist of what you're doing there is load uh, prusiks on the load side and carabiner slash if you got one of these uh, the pulley to make things even smoother rides down the running the porter app side of things and then that will ride your ride your load way on out away for you out into uh, out into uh, better territory for you. So, hopefully, some of you uh, let me know if you guys let me know if you guys used that before or seen that before, uh, or if you guys are are you know benefited from it. And uh, can't wait to go uh, go check it out. You know, if you're gonna get uh, go employ this this as soon as you can, let me know. I'd be I'd be uh, happy to hear uh, that it uh, helped out some folks. You know, would mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching.